All things are possible if you believe. What we've got to understand is we're trading our life for our goals. Literally trading our life. I believe when you wake up, you should get up. The second you wake up, get your feet hit the floor. Move into action. Need motivation? Watch your top 10 with Believe Nation. What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. I believe in you. And this channel is designed to be a part of your daily success routine. So let's get your motivation to a 10 and get you believing in you. Grab a snack and chew on today's lessons from a man who went from being absolutely broke and dropping out of school to reading Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, turning his life around and being a law of attraction expert. He's Bob Proctor. And here's my take on his top 10 rules of success, volume four. Also, if you want to know what Bob and other entrepreneurs have to say about building unstoppable confidence, check out my 254 confidence series where every day for the next 254 days, I will send you a morning video for free to help you build your confidence. The link to join is in the description below. I was reminded this morning of a question I'm often asked. How do you eliminate fear from your life? Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, move into action. You know, Don Shula, the coach of the old my, Miami Dolphins, he said it's the start that stops most people. And he's right. It is the start that stops most people. They're always gonna get ready to get set to get going. What we've gotta do is, boom, just like that, move into action. See, if you don't get started, you're never gonna get finished. How do we do that? Start early. I believe when you wake up, you should get up. The second you wake up, get your feet hit the floor, move into action. And you know, you'd be wise if you sit down at night before you go to bed and write down six goal achieving activities. Now that isn't go to the store, or go to the bank or get to cleaning. It's not that. These are goal achieving activities, write down six of them. And when you wake up in the morning, you move into action. You know where you're gonna go. You don't even have to think about it. Step into action and get on the first one. When you get it done, forget it and go to the second one. Don't think about the first one, focus on two. Don't even think about three. When you get two done, go to three. But knock them off one at a time. If you don't get them all done, just move them over on to the next day. Now that doesn't mean if you only get three done that you have nine the next day. There are three of the six that you're gonna do the next day. Six goal achieving activities. And when you wake up in the morning, move into action on them. Quit holding yourself back. Don't wait. You say, well, I really don't know how I'm going to get started and the way will show itself. It just appears. I have found when you get started, when you move into action, everything starts to happen around you. Rule number two, have a strong why. I have worked all over the world. I mean, all right. over Asia, China, South America, North America, Europe. And I'm always asking people, what do you really want? And I have found most people don't want to be really wealthy. What they do want is they don't want to have any financial concerns. If they want to buy a new suit, they can go and get one. If they want to take a trip, they can take the trip. If they um, want a new car, they can get the new car. They don't want to just run out and spend or buy. They don't want to have any financial concerns. Two, they want to wake up in the morning excited about how they're going to spend their day. Oof. And the third, they want to mix with people who are upbeat and uh, creatively productive. These are the three things that people really want. So in answer to your question, if somebody's watching, what's the first thing they should do? Well, the first thing they should do is understand why we have goals, not just to set a goal, because most people don't set goals right. They, they're operating with a limited level of consciousness, so they're thinking, hmm, if I could get a little more money, and if I could get him to help me and her to help me and this happen, then I could do this. Maybe this is get a new car. What we've got to understand is we're trading our life for our goals, literally trading our life. Would you trade your life for a car? or a house? I don't think so. So it's got to be something really meaningful. And we're not taught to think this way. 
we should sit down and don't give any thought to where the money's gonna come from, where the help's gonna come from. It's what do you really want? Like Ed Hillary was a beekeeper in Auckland. That story. He wanted to climb Mount Everest. It had never been done. People died trying to do it. He went in 51 and failed. He went back in 52 and failed. In 1953, he stood on top of the mountain with Tenzing Norgay. But he didn't know how to get there until after he had got there. Edison didn't know how to illuminate the world until after he had done it. The Wright brothers were bicycle mechanics in Dayton, Ohio. No one believed you could fly. They had been trying it for years. But they saw it. But they wanted to do it. They didn't know how, and they couldn't tell you until after they had done it. Now the first flight only lasted 12 seconds. And the naysayer said, yeah, but they only were up there for 12 seconds. They said, we not only got up there, we kept the damn thing up there for 12 seconds. So when a person sets a goal, they've got to say, what could I want? If I just let my mind rock, just wander, use my imagination, how do I really want to live? That's what they should be doing. Rule number three, start with a vision. Most people don't use their imagination constructively. Most people use their imagination destructively. They imagine what they don't want. We've got to consciously and deliberately imagine what we do want. If we will take and sit down with a pen and ask ourselves, what do I really want? What do I really want? And write it down. And then make a written description of it in the present tense. Writing causes thinking. Thinking creates an image. And you get these images going, you're building a vision in your mind. It's the visionaries that's changed the world. Think of that. The fact that I can sit and look into this camera and you can sit and look at me on your phone or on your TV or on your laptop. That was the result of somebody's vision. Do you know everything you've got, the clothes you wear, the house you live in, this microphone that's in front of me, it was all the result of somebody's vision. It's not an accident. You and I have a marvelous imagination. And everything starts with a vision. Van Gogh was asked how he did such beautiful work. He said, first I dream my painting, and then I paint my dream. Rule number four, improve your self-image. You know, Dr. Maxwell Maltz wrote a book back around 1960. It was called Self-Image Psychology, Psycho-Cybernetics. It's a phenomenal book. He said it was the greatest discovery of his generation. He was a cosmetic or a reconstructive surgeon, and he found he would do work on people. He might have been a nose job or removed a terrible scar. And he noticed that when he did that, there was a phenomenal change in their personality. But he noticed with others, he would make a phenomenal physical change and there was no change in their personality. And that led him to postulate that we have two images. We have the one that's coming back from the mirror, but we've got an inner image. And that inner self-image is literally controlling our life. You will find people that have a very poor self-image or low self-esteem. They won't look you straight in the eye. They're afraid to shake hands with you. They're very shy and withdrawn. They go through life hiding from life. They don't like themselves. They don't know themselves. Do you know when a person improves their self-image, they change their entire life their income change, their relationship change, their health changes. And you know how you do that? Start studying you. Start to find out more about you. There's something phenomenal about you. Do you know when I began to study this material 57 years ago, I had very poor self-image. I had low self-esteem. I took dumb jobs. I never earned any money. I never had fun. I had poor relationships. And as I started to study, started to study real solid information. Everything in my life started to improve. I've got friends all over the world today. I earn millions of dollars. I'm in my 80s and I get as much energy as a person in their 30s. Do you see, 
When you start to understand really who you are, you're God's highest form of creation. There's things about you that just about blow your mind as you start to study and really understand them. You'll walk a little taller. You'll stand a little straighter. And you know something? You'll enjoy a whole lot more of life. Rule number five, develop self-awareness. You've got to wake up. You see, all we're ever going to get is awareness. We've already got everything. The only thing we lack is the awareness of what we've got. We're God's highest form of creation. There's nothing on the planet that will equal us. Well, that's all, we're, that's all any of us are after. That's all the problems in the world come from ignorance. That's God. the purpose of life, to overcome ignorance, develop awareness. The only way to overcome er ignorance is through knowledge. And the only way to get the knowledge is to study. Most people, they finish school, close the books, they say, oh, that's over, I'm never gonna open another book as long as I live. <laughs> They're screwed, it's all over. Rule number six, make decisions. You know, Napoleon Hill, in Think and Grow Rich, wrote an entire chapter on decision. Most people never make decisions. They have a difficult time with it. Why is that? I think they have a difficult time because their parents made decisions for them until they were too old and they never learned how to make them. Do you know, the one thing that I did with my kids, I never made a decision for them. They didn't like it. They'd say, come on, don't do that to me. And I said, no, what do you think you should do? And I'd leave it at that. Decision-making is a phenomenal concept. And you're gonna find out, as he points out in here, that successful people make decisions very fast and they change them very slow if and when they change them at all. And he said the people that have difficulty in life make their decisions very slow and then change them fast and often. And you know, decision-making is a funny thing. You and I think on frequencies. If we could see a bunch of lines and we're thinking on a frequency and we're on this frequency here and we say, I'm gonna do that when this changes. This is never gonna change until you get up on this frequency. See, the good that you're after is on a higher frequency than you're operating on, a greater awareness. And if you're down here and you're thinking here on this frequency and the good you want up here, you gotta get your mind up there. How do you get up there? Make the decision, be there. And that's really what you have to do. The second you make a decision, you flip your brain onto a different frequency and you start to attract things to you that you couldn't, you'd never get without making the decision. Rule number seven, get out of the box. See, someone woke me up, that's all I wanna do with someone else. What the man said to me, the first guy, he said, you can have whatever you want. Well, you know, you get thinking that you, you can get out of the box. That's why you've been given an imagination, to get out of the box. It's with your imagination that you build images of what you want. And if you can build the image, you can do it. You can hold it in your head, you can hold it in your hand. When we understand that, like I would imagine this goes out to a lot of athletes, doesn't yep. it? Well, they can, they can have anything they want. They gotta pay the price. And when doubt comes in, kick it out. You yes. can't afford the doubt. Rule number eight, grow yourself. If I wanna do something, I find somebody that's already done it. And then I do exactly what they tell me. Hmm. It's a simple rule to follow. I, um, I don't read novels. I don't watch movies. Um, I'd watch documentaries or things like that where I can learn. Uh, I'm only interested in studying something that can cause me to become more of what I'm capable of being. Um, see, I think we're all hardwired to do something really special with our life. And that's all I want to do. Hmm. I'm really good at what I do. I could walk by a person in the hall and like that, I could tell them exactly what they're like. I could read their energy like a book. Everything goes on the inside, shows on the outside. See, we're, we're gifted with, with faculties of the mind that the average person knows nothing about. You have intuition, the will, reason, imagination, perception, memory. That's what separates us from all the rest of forms of life. We go through school and never learn anything about it. Like you'll hear people say they have a bad memory. There's no such thing as a bad memory. Everybody has a perfect memory. It's just weak. They've never developed it. Our imagination, 
your imagination is the most magnificent. He, Hill said, it's the most marvelous, miraculous, inconceivably powerful force the world's ever known. I can use my imagination to project myself into the future and bring the future into the present and start living there. You work from the imagination. You don't work to it. You work from it. Backwards from the result. Yeah. Rule number nine, surround yourself with greatness. You know, the people you surround yourself with have a phenomenal impact on your life. I think it was Carl Menninger from the Menninger Foundation one time said, environment is more important than heredity. The people we're surrounded by have a greater bearing on our life and our success in life than what's built into the genes at birth. There's genetic conditioning, there's environmental conditioning. Well, this environmental conditioning goes on all the way through life. You will find as you improve the quality of your life, improve your thinking, you're gonna attract a different group of people into your life and they are going to add to your life. See, the people we're surrounded by, their thinking is going right into our mind. We wanna mix with people who are really making it happen. Take a look at your five people that you're with most often and ask yourself, if I have children, would I want them to grow up be like them? If the answer is no, you better start looking for some new friends. If the answer is yes, you're already in the right circle of people. Think about what I'm saying. The people we're surrounded with have a phenomenal impact on our life and help make us who we are. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip is believe. William James from Harvard said, believe and your belief will create the fact. All things are possible if you believe. Well, you know, I studied for a long time. I started to study this book, Think and Grow Rich. And he talks about belief in here. He says, you're not ready for what you want until you believe you can get it. I found that the only two sources of reference we could go to to find out anything about ourselves is science and religion. They all say you've got to believe. So I got figuring out, how do you, how do you believe? How do you change a belief? Interesting subject, because I'm gonna tell you something. Your results are nothing but the manifestation of your belief system. Well, our belief system, now listen carefully, is based upon our evaluation of something. And frequently when we reevaluate a situation, our belief about that situation will change. Let me repeat that. Our belief system is based upon our evaluation of something. Frequently, if we reevaluate a situation, our belief about it will change. I began reevaluating who I was. I started to study. I never stopped studying. And I found as I reevaluated, I had a much higher opinion of myself. I found out things about me that I would have never believed if you had told me. The power that's locked up within us, the marvelous system we've got. Do you know the blood circulates through your veins every 33 seconds, through hundreds of miles of passageway, Bang, just like that, colors all the food in and all the garbage out. Stop and think of the central nervous system. It's the most complex electrical system in the world. And you've got it. Think of your brain, an electronic switching station like that. You can change the vibration of yourself and everything around you. We have awesome powers. And it's all based on what you believe about you. Now I've got a really special bonus clip on how to change from the inside that I think you're going to really enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three point landing questions. Time to move from just watching another video to taking action in your life or your business. And if you're feeling bold, answer these questions in the comments below. Here we go. Question number one, what do you need to believe more in? Number two, how can you surround yourself with that more daily? And number three, how can you move into action on it immediately? However, once your desire has been firmly established, it is the expectant attitude that ensures your goal or dream is not uprooted or replaced by any opposing idea. You see, when you understand how this power works and your conscious relationship to it, you're not going to be knocked off track by circumstance because you are expecting the right thing to happen. Like Paul Hutze said, he said, I found the 10 acre lot because I was looking for the 10 acre lot. 
Most people don't expect it. They just think because they've changed vocations, they've changed towns, they've changed spouses, they've changed clothes, they've changed cars, that everything's going to happen. Uh-uh. You don't change the kitchen by painting the outside of the house. If you want your results to change permanently and dramatically, you got to change them inside. So let me give you the one word secret to happiness. One word. This is all you need to be happy. The most important word ever. If you had to think of one word that's most important to you or that sums you up or that would be kind of like a little beacon. If you want more Bob Proctor, check out the How to Change Your Paradigm video that I made on him. The link is right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. When you're going ahead, the only thing you can measure is what you're giving up. What about what's coming? You know what's coming? What you want.